And I think that may even be a part of what's required for this, this problem that people have with regard to getting out of bed is that their lives are so chaotic. Yo, Elliot. Yo, Elliot. What percentage of your mornings do you jump out of bed ready to work? Many people at my job never want to come to work. It's something they have to do. They get no fulfillment out of it. For me, I want my work to be something I look forward to. I might not want to do it every day, but I think 80% at least would be good. There's always going to be a part of you that dislikes but do it anyway. What percentage do you think people should be at? <laughs> so let me go back to your original question. What percentage of mornings do you jump out of bed ready to go? I'm not gonna say work, but go? I'm ready to go every morning. I jump out of bed every morning, like 100% of the mornings, right? Uh, that doesn't matter if it's Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Saturday, Sunday. I get out of bed basically the same time every day. And it's not because I'm excited, it's my body's ready to wake up at 5.30 every day because I have a pattern, I have a rhythm. And I think that may even be a part of what's required for this, this problem that people have with regard to getting out of bed is that their lives are so chaotic, right? Like if you don't have the same, they call it a circadian rhythm, right? Your circadian rhythm is like your body clock, but there are so many different aspects of what can throw that body clock off that affects your hormones, affects your moods, and of course will affect your behavior. Part of the reason why I get up every single day at 5.30 is because I have a very rhythmical lifestyle. And I very rarely put things into my body, right? Like alcohol, I don't really drink alcohol that much anymore. And if I do, like I did on Easter, it throws my whole rhythm off and I don't like that. I don't want anything to interrupt my, my pattern, my pulsation, right? Everything in life pulsates. Just think about your physiology, right? The heart pulsates. The lungs pulsate, right? Everything's pulsating. And if we maintain a healthy pulsation, life just carries itself on. The, the sleep-wake cycle is another pulsation. The sun is up, adrenaline. The sun is down, what is that? What makes you sleep, right? Sleeping hormones, catabolic, anabolic, right? Sympathetic, parasympathetic. So part of the reason why I jump out of bed every day is because I'm on a rhythm and, and I would encourage anybody who's struggling to just get onto a rhythm, right? Rhythm, and this will go to your question also, rhythm and living on a rhythm is not an emotional thing. It's a practical thing. Living with cycles and doing what you have to do when you have to do it and avoiding things that will interrupt your rhythm is, is practical. You don't need to feel anything about it. You just do what you have to do, whether you feel like it or not. And I think that's a part of the pro with people's problems, right? They can't get into a rhythm because they either don't feel excited about what they want to do because they think they need to feel excited or they have indulged in depressive attitudes about what they're doing. I think this is just a quote from my dad. And I never used to understand this. I used to resist this when my dad said this, but I'm starting to understand now as I get older. My dad says, you gotta be like a machine. You gotta be like a machine that does what it has to do every single day, whether it feel like it or not. What does that mean? That means that we have to set aside our thoughts about what we're doing. It has, means we have to set aside our opinion about what we're doing. We have to set aside our feelings about what we're doing. And if your machine is well oiled, and you know, think about the timing belt in a, in a, in a motor engine, that's a pulsation too, right? Those pistons, the timing belt keeps everything going. So you gotta be healthy. So if you got a healthy, strong, rhythmical purring engine because you don't pour any junk into the tank and you keep it oiled up, you keep everything balanced, just like that machine, just like that engine, there's no opinion about it. You got a job that means you are supposed to do that job. Wherever you are is exactly where you're supposed to be. That's another thing that we get caught up in that throws us off our rhythms. Because we live in, such, in a world that is in the clouds, literally in the clouds, we, live, we, live, we pick these up and they, they transport us 
into an imaginary world somewhere, what they literally call the clouds, that does what? It helps us or causes us to forsake what is, right? A hundred years ago, men didn't think about how passionate I am about the work that I'm doing. They didn't have opinions about the work that they were doing. They just got up and cobbled shoes. They smithed iron. They tilled the soil. They birthed, helped cows birth their babies. They planted seeds, right? They did practical things because that's what a man does. In fact, in the Bible, it says when Adam and Eve fall, God says to Adam, right? He gives them both their assignment now. He says, okay, you guys want to be like God? Cool. You got, now you got assignments. And he says one, one assignment to, get to Adam. He says, you will toil by the sweat of your brow for the days of your life. Work is not an option. <laughs> We're subject to work. And so if you have work, that's just what your machine is meant to do. The, the, the automobile machine doesn't drive down a, a particular road and say, well, I don't like this road. There's not enough flowers and trees. No, it does what it has to do because that's what it's built to do. You're built to work. So if you have a job, you're just doing what you're built to do. You can't have any opinions about it. And the worst thing to do, uh, to go back to this idea of living in dreamland and living in the clouds, the worst thing to do is to forsake what's in front of you because the attitude that you bring to what's in front of you will color your entire experience. It will change your character into that of negativity and you'll never ascend. You'll never get more. You'll never expand. You'll stay stuck. I used to listen to this new age lady on YouTube. I don't listen to her too much anymore, but she says a lot of smart things. She calls herself Abraham. Abraham Hicks. And she made a lot of sense with some of the things she said. She said, if you're in a state of resistance, you're just going to keep getting the things that you resist. Because your emotions, your thoughts, right? She was into this uh, um, law of attraction, which there's a lot of validity to it, right? Because you're thinking this, because you're feeling this, because it's pervading your soul, guess what? You're going to get more of it. But if you're, a, he, she says, but if you bring gratitude to the very things that you were resisting, now you're going to be in a state of abundance, right? Because gratitude can only come from abundance, meaning I have, I have a job, I have an income, I have a paycheck, I have enough food, I have enough to pay my bills. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. So when you put yourself into a state of, of gratitude, you are in abundance. And guess what happens when you're in abundance? You get more abundance. When you're in resistance, you get more resistance. When you're in abundance, you get more abundance. You know, that's, it's not as mystical as it sounds. <laughs> right? I know it sounds kind of new agey, but it's common sense. It's, it's pretty practical. <laughs> First question of the day, so I'm, I'm all over the place. He says, many people at my job never want to come to work. It's something they have to do. They get no fulfillment out of it. Let me address this fulfillment thing. I was thinking about this the other day because somebody asked me my thought on, you know, fulfillment. And I was very, you know, sometimes I'm very inflammatory about the things that I say, right? Because I like to drive things home. Fulfillment is effeminate. Only women seek to be fully filled. And it's because they're empty on the inside. Follow me. Woman has a womb. So a woman in her state of life is seeking to fill that womb. A woman will never truly be fully happy, fully fulfilled if she doesn't fill that womb with life. A man is already filled with life. Think about it this way. We don't have a, a hole in our body. We don't have a womb in our body that needs to be filled. We have life that projects into fulfilling a woman. No woman will be truly fulfilled. She could tell herself she's fulfilled. She could trick herself into being fulfilled. The world can clap and convince her that she's fulfilled, but she's never truly, just think about the word, fully filled unless she's filled up with a man, with his essence, and with a baby that grows on the inside. That's true fulfillment. 
Men shouldn't look for fulfillment because it means that we have a womb. It means that we have emptiness. A man is full of life. Now the world, again, the same way that the world tricks women into thinking that they're fulfilled when they're not, they trick men into thinking that there's something to, that they need to fulfill. A man, all man's power, all man's physical power is in his physiology. And it's animated by spiritual power. So a man's already fulfilled. So anybody who says they're not fulfilled, they're looking for fulfillment, they're acting like a woman. Any man that says that. A man projects himself into, his, into life so that he has a mission. That's the difference. Men seek mission, a doing. Women seek fulfillment, a filling. You see the difference? So never say as a man, I'm seeking fulfillment. Something fulfills me. That means you have a vagina. As a man, you project your mission. That's why they even call it a project. Men have projects, right? We project. Women, they don't project. They receive, right? Men project. We have projects. So as a man not fulfilled in his job, it's only because he's distant from what is. He is living in a dream state and he's hoping for emotional novelty. He's hoping for good feelings, all of which distract him from mission. And check this out. Mission doesn't have to be something grandiose. That's another, that's another lie from the clouds. A man's mission doesn't have to be grandiose. We don't have to save the world. In fact, if you think you're saving the world, that's an ego trip. I don't think I'm saving the world. A lot of people say, oh, Elliot, you saved my life. Oh, Elliot, you're saving people. I'm not doing none of that. I'm doing my job. I get paid to do this. So I'm just talking. If something happens as a result, that's great. But my mission is to show up here and speak. That's it. So as a man, your mission is to do the job that's in front of you. If you're stacking fruits, I was talking to one of the guys the other day who was upset with his job about stacking fruits, and he wants to do something else at the supermarket. But your mission literally is get up and stack those fruits like nobody's ever stacked them before with a good attitude. Stack those fruits with a good attitude and be fully present with what you're doing. And let that cup fill up so much that it spills over. Do you ever notice that it's the guy with the good attitude that gets all the opportunities? Not the guy who's wanting an opportunity. It's just like, just like with women and cats. <laughs> women and cats. It's the same thing. If you sit back and chill and you just, you're full in yourself. Women are attracted to you. But the minute you go, oh, I won, is, the, is when women start run away from you. It's the same thing with a cat, right? I use cats as an example. But you're just chilling and you go, pss, pss, right? Same thing with women, right? You do. You go, pss, pss. she looks. <laughs> and you go like this. Same thing with a cat. Pss, pss. But if you go, oh, kitty, and you go after it, pss, it scatters. So, <laughs> you know, I'm going with this. But anyway, do what's in front of you every day, whether you feel like it or not. Whether you feel like it or not has everything to do with not needing passion, not needing excitement, not needing novelty, but be like that machine and do what's in front of you. And keep your, keep your rhythm, keep your clock on, on, on point. He says, for me, I want my work to be something I look forward to. I might not want to do it every day, but I think 80% would be good. There's always going to be part that you dislike, but do anyway. Always, always, always. I was talking to a guy. In fact, I listened to a guy give a speech, and he was talking about another guy that he knows. I don't know if you guys ever uh, see Bulldog. Bulldog, I don't forget his last name, what he calls himself, on YouTube. I'm drawing a blank right now. But, but build Bulldog Mindset, he was talking, he was at a, uh, an event uh, we were both speaking at the other day. Yeah, Bulldog Mindset. 
and it was like a year ago. And he was talking about how he was talking about what I'm talking about right now, because he's a principal. He's like, yeah, hey, man, you got to work, whether you feel like it or not. And he said he knew a guy that was a pornography actor, right? Now, whatever your opinion of that is up to you. But there's a lot of guys out there that would love to get up every day and get paid to have sex. Woo, I get paid to have sex, man. Hot girls. And he asked me, he said, is there any, any, any days where you get up and you don't want to go bone these girls? And he says, oh, man, all the time. All the time. He's like, I don't feel like going to work. I don't feel like boning these girls. Right. So if that guy don't want to go to his job and most men, because the grass is always greener, most men <laughs> will be like, oh, I want that job. Guarantee you're going to get tired of that job, too. That's why emotions can't have anything to do with it. I know you say for me, I want my work to be something I look forward to. That's that's nice if that's the case, but don't need that. Don't need to look forward to it. In other words, don't, don't need to have an emotional satisfaction about it. Looking forward means exactly that. What do you do when you get up out of bed? You look forward. That means it's over there. I'm going to go do it. And that's, that's about it. So anyway, that's enough on that. He says, what percentage do you think people should be at? 100%. 100%. Right? And if, and if, your emotions are getting in your way. You got to turn them off. I'm not against emotions. I'm against unresourceful emotions that arise out of wrong thinking. Don't get me wrong. Oh, Elliot, you say don't believe your emotion, don't trust your emotion, don't have no emotion. I'm not saying don't have no emotions. <laughs> I'm saying if emotions are getting in your way, they need to be turned off. You need to ignore them. Right? As you feel something, don't mean it's true. We get to this. We get pretty diabolical when we follow our feelings for everything. We need. We need good feelings for everything, all right? So that's about that, dude. Hope that helps. Done. Did you know that there's a secret psychological and social war on masculinity in the West since at least the 1960s? If you think I'm crazy, you need to watch my new free masterclass. You'll learn the history and origin of this war, as well as how it's affecting your health your finances, and how females respond to you. If you're a man who's open to a compelling vision of traditional masculinity, financial freedom, success with women, and generous leadership, then you'll definitely want to study this class. It's called Make Men Strong Again, how millions of men are fighting back and winning the war against masculinity. Just click the link in this video or visit makemenstrongagain.com and get this brand new masterclass. It's completely free. It will blow your mind and has a ton of value and it's about 40 minutes long. So make sure that you pay attention and take notes. Why am I sharing this? I'm a mentor to millions of men worldwide on YouTube. So I'm familiar with the biggest reasons why men today are failing in so many areas of their life. And the answer will rock your world, but it's not totally your fault. Find out what's really going on. Click the link in this video to watch this class and start taking action today.